We're all in the same school district, but when you're in such a big school district, mm -hmm. like different campuses could have completely different, different problems. problems. But we also may have the complete same problem, mm -hmm. which yeah. is crazy. And I think the only way that you're able to know that is through these programs mm -hmm. like CELL, where you can have individuals from different school sites working together collaboratively yeah. and actually getting, you know, actually getting to know each other and mm -hmm. then also getting their perspective. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Proud to be LBSD podcast. I'm your host, Izzy, and today our guest is Michelle, here to talk about the Student Equity Leadership Team, or otherwise known as CELT. So, thanks for being here today, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me, Izzy. Yeah, of course. So, why don't you start off by introducing yourself and tell us how you got involved with CELT. So, hi, my name is Michelle Rivera, and I go to Wilson High School. I'm a junior in the LPS Pathway, and I'm also a intern in CELT. And I got involved with CELT actually around January. It was pure coincidence and pure fate, I believe. And so basically I got called in one time to the office or the tenant's office. I don't know what it is now. Um, but my pathway coordinator called me in and he's like, hey, we have this opportunity for you. And it's, it involves something with leadership and equity. And it'll, we don't know a lot, of, a lot about it right now, but um, you're going to do like an like a info session and you'll get to know a little bit about what's going on. But it focuses on like leadership and equity. And at the time, I was really, I was really looking for something into that, something to get involved with the school or like in the district. And I was like, that's a perfect opportunity for me. And so I guess it started in January of last year, of this year, actually. Oh, so it's okay. been like it's been a wave of how things have been going so far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So to get some context, can you tell me a little bit about what is CELL and what are the goals behind it? So basically, CELL is. Uh, in the name is Student Equity Leadership Team, and we focus on problems going on in our schools, and we highlight that problem. We do a report on it, like a presentation. Um, so we interview students, staff, parents, anybody that's involved with the problem or wants to change it. And our goals are to build relationship with district members, like students, also like with adults, so we can have an equal voice. Yeah. Along with that, we want to have equal representation in all the schools and all the district. And that's kind of how we focus on, like mostly, like just highlighting problems that are going on in the schools, because I feel like it's important to hear it through a student perspective. Because sometimes adults just don't know what's going on sometimes. Right. I think you bring up a good point about not only having that relationship with adults, because like obviously they, you know, they can advocate for us, but it's mm -hmm. a completely different thing to have a student advocating for another student. It becomes way more personal. And I think it it's more genuine because as students, we kind of understand what other, you know, what our peers are going through. And I think we having a student perspective and looking through a student lens is going to be so helpful in addressing these equity problems that we have within our district and especially within each individual school because obviously you know each school is going to be different yeah it is different like we all have different pathways we have different mm -hmm. programs we have all different problems going on like you said so yeah, i feel like it's really important and it matters a lot because mm -hmm. i feel like when it's like a student to student you you pay attention more and you're like oh i also see this problem like it mm -hmm. can even be something you didn't even realize yeah and so yeah, that's yeah. cool. And I also think, too, like when you're talking with a student, it's a completely different environment when you're talking Definitely. to someone on that level as opposed to talking to maybe a district adult. I think as students, especially if you're not necessarily involved, mm -hmm. that might be intimidating and you might feel the need to filter your opinion or filter your perspective. And when, when you're with another student, I think you have that space to express yourself without worrying about like, oh, is this person going to maybe think like, mm, you know, have those like just thoughts because it's like a student and you might be looked down upon. And I think like with when you're talking with another student, it's it's a very like different vibe for other students. It definitely is because it's like unfiltered, like you said. Yeah. So like you're like more honest about what's going on. Like, oh, like there's a problem going on in the bathrooms, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But if it was like a another like a like a staff member, this person would be like, oh, like I don't I don't think that's important to them. Like they're focused on more important stuff. But yeah, definitely when it's like a student, you you also like in a way comprehend how they're feeling because mm -hmm. you're also going through that. Yeah. Even if you realize it, if you don't. Yeah. Right. And it's essential to get that unfiltered opinion through student led conversations, because without a student perspective, you're not going to be able to adequately address these equity problems. Definitely. And there wouldn't be no changes going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and with that being said, I want to kind of circle back. So how was CELT started and what motivated the creation of it? So according to Dr. Brown, because mm -hmm. I did an interview with her earlier, um, CELT was motivated by an old equity team that they used to have in the district. 
And they kind of wanted to further it or make it something bigger. It was between her and Mr. Edson that came up with the idea one day. And they were, and the original plan started by they wanted to get a student from each school and face have an, like a highlight a problem going on in their school and re- do a report on it and kind of see. And then towards, but even though each student had like a different problem, we would all meet up and be and talk about it. Be like, oh, this is what's going on in my school. This is going on in my school. Oh, we're si- we have similar stuff going on. But to get it started, the first year, which was my year, um, we had, they picked two schools, Browning and Wilson, because for our problem that we highlighted was um, we had school uniform and Browning didn't have school uniform, but they had dress code. Mm -hmm. So they still had to follow in a way stuff that was going on. And it's similar, but it's also different. So Browning highlighted um, their uh, dress code and we highlighted uniform. And towards the end, we kind of just combined and like talked about it. So that's kind of how it was formed. It was just... Basically, to f- have a group to talk about schools, like the problems going on in our high schools and how we could fix that mm-hmm. through student perspective. Right. And you're kind of talking about, you know, your, your experience last mm-hmm. year and what you did and what you worked on. So I'm curious, can you kind of tell me a little bit about what project you did work on last year, what problem you were addressing and how you kind of approached um, a solution? Yes, definitely. So basically, we had a school uniform, as I said, and me and my partner, Noah, we had, they gave us options of what we could do to address the problem, like to get data. It was either like surveys or um, voice recordings, videotaping. And when me and Noah talked about it, we were like, oh, well, I think it'd be good if we do voice recordings because I feel like when you're just, it's your voice. Like you still have a say in the matter and it's unfiltered and it's like unfiltered. So you're, you're being totally honest. Mm-hmm. And we're like, why don't we, instead of just doing students, we also do staff and teachers because their opinion also matters because like we're all part of the school. Mm-hmm. And so we did voice recordings and we got a whole bunch of different opinions, which is crazy because where, what we, where we thought that we weren't going to get these answers we got the completely different thing and it was like, whoa, Mm -hmm. like people actually love dress, they love uniform and we thought they didn't. So it's kind of like that. And then we got lucky because at the same time there was other other students protesting Mm -hmm. against the uniform policy Mm -hmm. and they did a, they took out a survey and um, we were able to get the data from that. And it was about 80% of students that didn't want dress code or uniform yeah and we kind of also added that to our presentation because towards the end after like months of working together and getting data we made a presentation that was supposed to be that was presented to the district board and we filmed it here actually and we got to tell our story and for browning it was the same just more focused on the dress code and how it affects their students or like because i know there's some stuff on the dress code that it's we we it kind of changes in time like how stuff are right. worn yeah and so they highlighted that problem. And when we were talking to Mr. Edson about it, he was like, it was really funny to see or like to like, yeah, for me to see how um, there was their their presentation was more on like data and like mm-hmm. facts. And ours was more like a story. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of want to clarify and go back. So when you're saying that you guys were having voice recordings of mm-hmm. different, you know, individuals on campus, was were those anonymous? And were they like, were they people who volunteered? Like, how did that work? What was the process like? So basically, it's kind of like, you know, those TikToks where people go up to you and be like, hey, can you oh. say something? So <laughs> yeah. we did that. We went okay. up to people and we're like, hey, would you be, would you give us your opinion on the mm-hmm. uniform policy? Yeah. And they were like, some of the people were like, yeah, some people were like, no, I don't want to say anything. Mm-hmm. But then because you thought it wasn't anonymous, like, you don't have to mm. say your name yeah. nothing it's just like pure your voice yeah and when it when we told them that they were like oh let's do it like they volunteered it was all volunteer so yeah. yeah no and I think kind of going back to what you said I like the idea that it was balanced between kind of that qualitative and quantitative data collection of you guys having more of a story and Browning having more you know like hard stats mm-hmm. because I think with those two you can kind of combine them and get a bigger picture I think with one or the other it's kind of hard to consider different factors that you might be leaving out and with what you guys were doing with voice recordings I think that you get like I mentioned earlier, a bigger picture of everything and you get a greater understanding because it's so different to have your voice shine through, like just your voice and not necessarily answering questions like a yes or no question or a survey or whatever it may be. It's a completely different experience to have your voice being listened to and actually, you know, considered and being applied to, you know, solutions that we may have for the district. That's like for sure because, um, and it was easy to get student opinions because everybody last year had like 
their voice on dress like uniform mm -hmm. no one wanted uniform no one yeah. would follow the rules it was like so it was easy to get people to talk about it because mm -hmm. it's a problem that it affected all of us like we didn't want it anymore yeah all this other schools didn't have uniforms so it was easier to get information in that way because it in a way because it, we all connected all the students were affected and they're like oh well we want to take part in this mm -hmm. and in a way it was another way of getting student voice right so it was it was amazing yeah and i think ultimately cell is goes back to being elevating student voice mm -hmm. in the district and to be able to elevate student voice you have to consider student voice and it sounds like cell is going out of their way to address these problems by applying student voice you know to the solution which i think is great because i think that's the way that we're going to see actual results in the and changes in the yeah, district yeah, yeah or in exactly. our school yeah exactly mm -hmm. um and so also moving forward i'm kind of curious about the dynamic of cell so how does cell work is it online in person is it one person from each school is it just you you know kind of can you tell me a little bit about that so it's kind of a little bit of everything you said okay so basically when we started um it was more we would meet one time one time in person mm -hmm. And then we would also do Zoom meetings to connect with the other interns because, you know, we all have busy schedules. Right. But we, we all want to see what's going on. Yeah. So we would do one meeting in person just with, like, our team and mm -hmm. our school, like me and Noah. And then in Brownie, it would be Halona and the other interns that mm -hmm. worked with her. And um, we would meet once a month. And then that same month, we would meet in a Zoom meeting. And we would get to talk to the other interns, like, what's going on in your school? And we would be like, oh, this is what's going on in ours. Mm -hmm. So it was like that. And then it's kind of how it works. But now we're kind of working on a different project, which is which will be really interesting. It has something to do with this podcast. Mm -hmm. But um, that's kind of how it works. It's a, it's a mix of everything, which is what I love. Because when you work in a team, you have to be flexible with everybody else. And you right. have to take, like, all their qualities and consideration and mm -hmm. their time and in a way we and we all want to be part of that team so we get to all work together and it's it's good yeah it sounds like cell you kind of have that balance of working mm -hmm. collaboratively but you also have a time to you know spotlight your individual opinion which i think is great also because again i think it's all about balance i think yeah in anything that you do or in anything you approach when you're expecting a result you're gonna have to have that balance of you know whatever it may be in that situation mm -hmm. so and i completely we all build different that. connections because yeah you guys learn what's going on in other people's schools and, mm -hmm. it, and it shocks you what's going yeah. on. Isn't that so funny that yeah. like, we're all in the same school district, but when you're in such a big school district, mm -hmm. like different campuses could have completely Be different, different problems. problems. But we also may have the complete same problem, mm -hmm. which yeah. is crazy. And I think the only way that you're able to know that is through these programs mm -hmm. like CELT, where you can have individuals from different school sites working together collaboratively yeah. and actually gaining, you know, actually getting to know each other and mm -hmm. then also getting their perspective. Yeah, that's what I love about so because we get to do that and we mm -hmm. get to talk to other people. And I feel like that's important because if you stay in your own school, you, you won't get to expand mm -hmm. your like thoughts and like what's going on. Yeah. But it, when you have opportunities like this, it's awesome because like you get to work, you get to see what's going on. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. It's great to get out of your bubble. Mm -hmm. You don't want to stay in the same bubble of people, you know, to in your high school because you see those people every day. I think yeah. it's important to kind of branch out and mm -hmm. get to know people from Browning, which is a completely different school from Wilson. Yeah. I think all around it's very different. And even their goals. Too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're touching on goals. So I want yes. to circle back <laughs> and ask a little bit more about you. Um, and so in your time as a cell intern, what have been some of your goals? For sure, one of my like my biggest goal is just to elevate student voice, show that we have equity in the district, mm -hmm. in our schools, our voice matters. Because I feel like when you're just a student and you talk to someone like a teacher, or, like a member, you don't think your voice matters. You're like, oh, they have bigger problems going on. But when it's like us, like interns, our job is to build relationships with, with like district leaders or adults that we can all have an equal voice in. So I feel like it's one of my biggest goals and also to like inspire people to like branch out, like get out of mm -hmm. your comfort zone. Like you said, your bubble. Yeah. Like do something that matters. Like if there's a problem going on at your school, go ahead and tell someone. Like mm -hmm. I know someone is always listening. That's how my voice was heard. And yeah. I feel like those are some of my goals. And just to like make some changes happen. Like yeah. we were able to get uniform to happen with just that little thing that we did for like a few months, that video, it made an impact. Right. And that's what I kind of want to know like have people know mm -hmm. that we have that we have that you just have to find it yeah and i think it's so easy too to like fall into that pattern of underestimating yourself mm -hmm. and putting you in that own bubble for you know and i think it's important to push yourself out of that bubble i think in the moment obviously it's very hard and it can be very intimidating but i think once you do that you can have results like you said with cell you were able to put you know put together this presentation for the district and close that gap mm -hmm. of you know district um, members and students and in doing so you were able to elevate student voice and elevate your perspective and kind of have that um 
the no, the whole notion of mm-hmm. you, you know having our voice being equal to the district because I think ultimately the students are the center of the school district. I think when you want to implement um, different programs or different solutions in our schools, you have to consider the students first and foremost. They really are, and I feel like another one of my goals, even though I was done, yeah. <laughs> but it was like also expanding like. I always hang out with a certain group, but mm-hmm. when I got to do the project about u- the uniform, yeah. I got to talk to other people in different groups. Mm-hmm. So we get to highlight the voices of different groups that may not be heard. Right. And that's why I feel like super important because we're all just, we're all one. Mm-hmm. We're all in this together and we all have problems affecting us. And mm-hmm. we could all, um, we can all like work together to fix it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's power in numbers. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, power and you know being an advocate for others Definitely. and i think mm-hmm. with cell you're able to have that space where you can speak up for others who may not necessarily be able to do it themselves or who don't have the space to especially when you're at a bigger school like wilson yeah i think it's so easy to fall into that whole like do i matter do i like am i important on this campus like in a school of four thousand people yeah. you're such a small fish mm-hmm. in such a big pond you know and i think Like what you're saying, when you can advocate for people who are, you know, who might get lost in translation, Mm -hmm. it's really important um, to have that voice for them, you know, which I think is great. (laughs) Um, And so earlier, you kind of teased a little bit about what you're going to be doing this year with Cell um, about the podcast. So can you kind of expand on what you are going to be working on this year? So what we will be working on this year is a podcast all about equity and more about Mm Cell. We're going to be highlighting more schools. We're going to get more schools involved. We're going to get programs, clubs, pathways, all that focus on leadership and mm-hmm. equity. And I think, and we're also doing it so we could get people that don't know where to find these opportunities to go ahead and participate in them. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like sometimes you're stuck. You're like, oh, there's so many options or I don't know where I could go and find where I, what I want to be or mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, I mean, when we have stuff like sell. Um, they could come and join and we're going to be making it more open to people to come and join those Mm -hmm. those clubs and those programs because they're really awesome yeah and we're gonna we're gonna be doing basically is highlighting at least one program or a club in every school that focuses on student voice and equal equal voice within voice and communication with leaders so people can or students can know where they could go to find these resources we have so many great programs in the mm-hmm. district, but sometimes we just don't know about them. Yeah. And like I found that to be a common pattern of like we have these resources and like we have things to do. We have events like but some students just don't know about that. And I feel like it holds us back. And I think like we don't need to have that holding us back. And through Cell and through this podcast, hopefully we can kind of close that gap and highlight these programs and these clubs and, you know, whoever else you might have on the podcast so that we can encourage students in the district to, you know, hey, like going back to that idea of like getting out of your bubble and being mm-hmm. able to like get involved with the school district and you know be involved with your peers like this is like here's your little push that you might need <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. come join us come be a part of like what we're creating because mm-hmm. i feel like that's something lbusd does is yeah. they really emphasize on student voice and they try to have students matter like our district leader axel he was so nice <laughs> he's so welcoming we love him and yeah. then we also have Cal at Carrillo, mm-hmm. my friend goes there and she loves her pathway, everything they do. And there's also like different programs and it's amazing what mm-hmm. you can learn about people. Right. And it's one thing to place emphasis on the negative, which I think we need because mm-hmm. obviously we need to be able to have negative, or just that feedback to be yeah. able to grow. But also we need to, you know, highlight the positive in our district that we already have. Mm -hmm. And with Cell, I think you can kind of find that balance between the two of, you know, yes, there are negatives and maybe we're lacking in one area, but Mm -hmm. that's okay because we can take feedback and we can apply that to a solution and kind of work towards getting better in a certain area. But then we also have the positives too, Mm -hmm. which I think, like you said, you know, through programs like CalJ or, you know, have certain people too, like Axel. Yeah which is really great. Um, and so as we come to a close, Michelle, I want to ask in your time with Cell, what's been kind of your biggest takeaway from being involved with the program? I feel like my biggest takeaway is noticing what big of an impact we kind of made. Because mm-hmm. like we had a uniform policy last year. Yeah. And even with the help of the other students at Wilson, we were able to take it away. Yeah. And it's all, and it's awesome because now you get to see like the student and staff interactions. Like yeah. I remember last year I would walk in and I would be like, oh, I'm scared. Like I don't want to see that staff member because mm-hmm. they're going to dress code me. And I walk in and I'm like, hey, like, good morning. Like, it's a whole different, like, reaction or, like, interaction. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like it's one of my biggest takeaways and also getting to meet new people because yeah. I love talking to people and I love meeting people. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I just love seeing how people interact or what they're thinking, what like their thoughts mm-hmm. are. So I'm like, that's like, I think that's my biggest takeaway. Yeah. Getting, like getting out of my bubble. Yeah. And that's great that you've been able to use your voice for good, mm-hmm. that you've been able to use your voice with others um, as a collective and being able to work to a common, you know, towards a common goal, um, which is great. Um, and so on that note, those were all of the questions that I had for you, Michelle, but I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Izzy. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm.